Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today, we're exploring the 40th episode of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers titled Doomsday, Part 2. We begin this episode right where we left off, in the command center, with Zordon recapping how Cyclopsis is way cooler than the Rangers. Billy is working with Alpha, and the Zords aren't fully energized, and they need another 12 hours to be ready. Jason says that they'll take the Zords at half power, and Zordon warns them that that's probably a bad idea, but the Rangers say that they don't care. It's Morphin time. The Rangers arrive in the city, bringing together the Megazord right away. We watch Cyclopsis and the Megazord fight again, but this time Cyclopsis has arm blades that come out and just straight up cut off Megazord's arm. This is brutal, but luckily somehow the Megazord has eye lasers to defend itself despite only having one arm. Jason calls out for the Dragon Zord again, and why does this already feel like a repeat of the last fight? The Dragon Zord's tail gets cut in half by the arm blades, and then Lokar remembers that he's there and fires the Megazord into Dragon Zord. Rita fires at the Zords, and the Zords start to slowly disappear, and the Rangers have to abandon ship, landing back into the park. They try to reach Zordon, but they can't because, according to Billy, Rita is probably jamming their telecommunication frequencies somehow. Also according to Billy, the Zords aren't destroyed, that was just their new panic button switch that happens when the Zords lose. They go back to the secret hiding spots to be re-energized. Way to take the tension out of the situation, Power Rangers. They go to Billy's garage to change the frequency on their communicators. At the command center, Zordon and Alpha are trying to get in contact with the Rangers to no avail. The teens show up at Billy's garage and he starts to read you the communicators, but Kim brings up a good point that even if Billy fixes the communicators, then what? Jason says, hopefully Zordon has already come up with a plan. Huh. On the moon, Rita and gang celebrate their win, but Goldar is planning to go on down by himself to finish off the teens. Back at the garage, Billy is still working when Goldar and literally two putties show up, threatening to kill the five. This would mean a lot more if Jason hadn't defended himself against Goldar by himself a number of times before in the exact same situation. In the command center, apparently Alpha has discovered that because of Rita's palace being on Earth, they now have access to her database of spells and secrets. What, does Rita not have a password on her damn iCloud account? They plan to use this knowledge to defeat her. At the garage, Billy finishes changing the frequency on one communicator, and somehow that changes all five because they just teleport out of there. We would think that someone would have put a GPS in those things for Zora and Alpha to keep track of the Rangers. The Rangers arrive at the command center and Zordon tells them that Cyclopsis always adapts to their mode, so they need to change the modes quickly to confuse it. Oh, and Titanus just straight up emerges from the ground while Alpha says that the Zords are fully energized somehow. I sincerely doubt it's been 12 hours, but okay. The Rangers morph to the city and call out their dinosaurs, using them individually against Cyclopsis at first. Then they go into the Megazord and call in the Power Sword. Then they call out the Dragon Zord who helps despite this exact situation happening previously and they lost. They make Dragon Zord battle mode, which does well for some reason against Cyclopsis, until Lokar reminds them that he's there and he fires at them. Then they bring them together to form the Ultra Zord with Titanus. Then we get the best part of this episode yet. Inside Cyclopsis, Goldar hears a computerized voice say, Overload, overload, too many changes, all systems locked. God bless you, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. He bails just before the Ultra Zord blows up the middle of the city. The Rangers bail their Zords right away for some reason, and Rita decides to get out of there really quickly. Where the hell is Lokar? Doesn't matter though, because the people of Angel Grove are free and back in the park where the Power Rangers show up, giving high fives to everyone. A couple kids talk about which Ranger is the coolest, but then Tommy shows up, letting them know that all the Power Rangers are totally awesome. The Power Rangers walk onto the stage with the mayor of Angel Grove, and this is something I've neglected to mention. There's just like a huge poster of them behind them with the power blaster pointed at the camera. What? In the command center, the teens are talking with Zoran about how they've dealt Rita a serious blow. He gives them a choice. Continue to be Power Rangers or return to their regular lives. The Rangers say that there's no reason because even if Rita is hurting, they still have crime to fight in Angel Grove. Oh, and Alpha walks by saying that he has a computer virus and he's sneezing. Then they put their hands together and freeze frame into what could have very well been the end of the series. This definitely feels like a season or series ender even if the way that they resolved everything was a ton of horseshit. I think they wrote themselves into a corner with the Zords being defeated so easily prior, and now they had to come up with some lame ass excuse to resolve it. Besides that, this is a pretty decent two-parter that really makes you conscious of the fact that these are the heroes of Angel Grove for now. I actually like that Zordon gave them the chance to return to their regular lives, but they turned it down. While cliche, it shows a little growth compared to the first episode where they just left the command center with Zordon's stuff in tow. Don't touch that dial just yet though, because guess what? 
there are still 20 more episodes of season one left somehow. How will the rest of this season pan out? Find out next time. But until then, may the power protect you.